And we are live. Right after this commercial break, <laughs> we'll let some people tune in on Facebook. Hey, everyone. Usually takes a couple minutes sure, for sure. people to tune in. Yeah, of course. And welcome to another edition of Real Talk, episode two. And uh, we have a great special, I think a special show tonight. We have a great guest tonight. Who am I joined by? Casey, how's it going, everybody? Casey is in studio. Um, we're going to be discussing the movie Clay Pigeons. So before we get into that, please check out the Facebook page, the YouTube page, which is the Other People Show. You can hear this episode on 88.7. WMMT will be on Saturday at, uh, I think, 10, 10 p.m. this Saturday. And, uh, yeah, check out all these things. We've had a lot of stuff going on this past week. We've started off uh, strong back in 2023. Yes. So that's what we're going to try to do and uh, bring some entertainment and some and highlight some smaller movies or some odd movies that most people may have never heard of. Sure. So what's interesting about this movie, we'll jump right in. Um, is no one had ever that I've ever mentioned this movie to ever has heard of it. Really? Yeah. Just move the mic a little bit closer. Uh, closer. Got you. And when I heard that you had heard of this, yeah, that's when I had messaged you. And yeah. Asked you because I was like, wow, that's the first person ever. Yeah, it'd been a while. But... And uh, I purchased the VHS back in the early two thousands. Oh wow! And so I've seen it. You know, probably fifteen. 15 to 20 times since then. Nice. And, and last night was another uh, addition to watching it. Yeah. So uh, I want to give a little bit of the synop synopsis here. Um, after, after witnessing his best friend's suicide and meeting a charming stranger, bodies begin to pile up, all pointing to the same crime suspect. You think that would wrap up, basically? Sure. Well, it's a good... Uh... It's a pretty basic synopsis because it does not even capture no. <laughs> some of the insanity that ensues. No, true. So this is an early Vince Vaughn, Joaquin Phoenix movie. There, um, right. early. I'd say Vince Vaughn is probably what would you say mid twenties, late twenties, maybe. Mid, yeah, mid to late, probably. He's fifty two now. Yeah, I looked up, so he's probably. Young. And Joaquin Phoenix has to be early. He's forty nine now. So he has to be early 20s, yeah. or 24, 25. Yeah, he almost looks the same, though. Yeah. Joaquin does. He, like, you can see the difference in Vince Vaughn. Yeah. Janine Garofalo looks the same, too, yeah. as, like, she ever No, did. I met Janine Garofalo one day. Really? Yeah, I oh, saw well, that's her cool. do her, um, I wouldn't say it's stand-up. It's more, like, observational humor, I guess. Sure. Um, but it was at uh, a little place in D.C. Um, nice. And then after, after the show... Because during the show, she said she had walked here from her hotel. So I knew. I was like, well, I know if I wait long enough, uh, I'll see her walking. And yeah. I just came up and I said, uh, hey, it was a great show. Uh, do you mind if we had a picture with you? Yeah. And she said, yeah, sure. So we took a picture. The first picture, her eyes happened to be closed. Yeah. So uh, she looked at it and uh, said, do you want another one? My eyes are closed. I said, yeah, sure, if you don't yeah. mind. We took another one. Nice. We went on our way. Nice. But I wish that I would have mentioned that I liked her in this film. Yeah. Because I would say out of things she's done, not many people mention this film. No, not at all. <laughs> the role is kind of minimal. I mean, she doesn't even come in. So Act I, three. I, yeah. yeah. Act I'll three. We're halfway through the movie. Yeah. Um, but it's classic Janine Garofalo, too. Mm -hmm. It's kind of dry. Her here. line delivery. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. Okay, so um, let's see. We've got a few facts here. It was released in 1998. 
And I didn't know this. Uh, the director, David Dutkins, he had worked on music videos for Tupac, wow. Elton John, Coolio, Maroon 5, and amongst others as well. As well as directed the features Shanghai Nights, Wedding Crashers, Fred Claus, and The Judge. Huh. Wedding Cla Crashers and Fred Claus uh, being Vince Vaughn. Vince Vaughn, yeah. sure, sure. So um, it had a budget of $8 million. Now, I was wondering when watching it, I don't. I didn't see how eight million was spent no, on that. No, I don't either. Especially in because ninety, you know, well, it would have been year previous. Yes, yeah, so ninety seven. Yeah. Uh, you know, Vince Vaughn and Joaquin. None of the stars got paid that much. No, because they, they were, weren't stars. They yet. weren't stars. No. Um. So I don't know what the money went on. I mean, that's still not really. That's a relatively inexpensive movie by Hollywood standards, but. Uh, I don't know what it went on. It only made one point eight million dollars. So wow. the box office flop. Sixty one percent positive on Rotten Tomatoes and sixty seven percent positive on audience reactions. Um, it was shot in Utah and I guess Lancaster, California, in six weeks. The whole movie was filmed in six weeks. Yep. Wow. They were doing uh, six days a week, uh, so thirty six days. Sure. Sure. And I, I worked on a small movie this this past summer, and we did uh, we did I'm trying to I think we did twelve or twelve days, and we did about twelve twelve hour days yeah. straight, and that was I mean you're making a movie sure so it's fun sure but it is work work nonetheless and when you run into those obstacles and problems. You're like even the worst day on the film set's probably better than the you know the the worst day on a film set is still great because you're on the sure, film you're set. On the film set. <laughs> but it still can be frustrating, you know. But uh, especially if your product doesn't turn out. Now I often wonder when uh, you know if you're an actor director, do you measure your product by the how much money it makes, right? Or how much, or audience, you know, uh, satisfactory, or the feeling you get from leaving the movie or from yeah, making it. From making, you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, it'd be like a piece of art or music. Yeah. You, know, you right. make the music really for yourself or to share to others. And I guess each person is. Yeah, I was going to say it almost, it almost kind of depends. You know, but there's a, there's a lot of box office flops that end up being well Donnie Darko this shit last yep. week there's one it was it was another one like this flopped out but yep. it's called classic. And you had seen Donnie Darko, sure. Darko as well. Sure but I you know but I don't know that I would put this clay pigeons in that uh cult classic. No kinda because not enough people I mean it's kinda it's one of the it kind of depends on you as the viewer whether or not you're gonna like this movie. Mm -hmm. um, it's one that when I watched it <clears throat> Years later, you know, uh, I thought this seemed like a movie that was made trying to be a cult classic. Sure, sure. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I agree. And it, you're right. It, it, I, I, it, it, it isn't a cult classic because, like I've said, a lot of people have heard of Donnie Darko. Yeah. You know, a lot of people now have heard of like uh, um, Pee Wee's Big Adventure or this Spinal Tap or you know sure. things like that. But Clay Pigeons, nah. like I said, you were the only person um, that I've ever yeah knew that uh, I had heard of it. Yeah, I mean, it's a decent movie. It it could have been better. Some mm -hmm. of the act, there's some decent acting in it, but it's almost still kind of hit and miss. Like I remember watching it on, on this. Well, it had a couple of I don't want to say powerful scenes. There's a scene when Amanda comes in. And and she's the one girl, the the waitress chick. Yeah, and that whole little scene that transpires her after was pretty powerful because I mean, she's just very stern face. He's pounding the wall. Yeah, and it's like whoa, whoa. But there's no other like that's a pretty powerful scene. There's some great there's some great Vince Vaughn. You know, you can see it was weird because I was watching a new Vince Vaughn was in it. I'm a Vince Vaughn fan. Right. Uh, granted, a lot of his characters are. They're very similar, but I mean, he's got the ran down now. So I'm watching it with that Vince Vaughn in mind, and it didn't live up to that, obviously. But it was strange because, like you know, we were discussing earlier, you could you could see 
in development. Yeah, yeah, you can see the early stages of it, but it's still kind of, yeah, you know. But it was decent. Walking Phoenix did a good job in it too. But the scene you mentioned where he, you know, where Amanda shoots the girl, the waitress, um, and he he's pounding the wall. I was watching it again, and I was like, he had to have been pounding the wall. Yeah, no, it totally looks like it. I mean, it's extremely believable scene. And uh, even her, just like her character alone, Amanda's character, like you hate her, but at the same time, you're just like, man, this kid is like, wow. And I think oh, everyone else might know somebody like that. Sure. You know what I mean? Sure. Someone like her. Oh, yeah. So it's a very relatable. <laughs> me too. Sure. She's a very relatable, relatable character. So let's get into uh, the plot and the story. So we, we touched on the plot a little bit earlier. So uh, you said you'd watched it years ago. Yeah. Well, yeah. But when and, and you it, started it, watching it, it again, it triggered memories. Oh, like sure, sure. So was it what you had remembered? Um, you want to set it up from, from, for, the, for the audience? Well, I, I, I kind of remember when I started remembering how the movie, I didn't really remember how everything unfolded. Right, you know, but I kind of remembered parts. So, yeah. So it starts out, and the whole general thing is you got you got Clay, who is Joaquin's character, he, and he's out there in the field with uh, uh, Earl, mm -hmm. his best friend Earl, who's married to uh, to Amanda. Yep. And, and it's it's funny because, of course, the way he talks about her uh, and this marriage that they have, as the movie transpires, and of course, you meet Amanda. <laughs> You're like, yeah, no, this dude was probably fairly disillusioned. Yes. Here, you know what I mean? He, he thinks she, she's like, oh, she was a virgin when we met. Yeah. And he's like, uh, I do remember she was a while. while. Yeah, yeah, no, and you find out now that's, that's probably for sure. <laughs> but, uh, and so the whole thing is he, Earl, decides that he's, he wants to kill himself because uh, he's just distraught over this thing with his this best affair, friend. Yeah. This affair, yeah, because, yeah, it's assuming the best friend. And, uh, but he's going to, he's going to make it look like, like Clay. In, in murder. It was murder. And then ends up just killing himself. <laughs> just doing it. Um, and, I, and I tell you, I remember I had a feeling, like, because, like I said, I remembered how it was going to play out, but I can remember that scene and he's talking to him and Clay is like, uh, I didn't even care. Like, it didn't even matter to me. I'm like, oh, it's going to go south real back. This dude's obviously in love with this chick, you know? And that's why he just kills himself down. Yeah. And, of course, Clay is freaking out, you know? Uh, and ends up pushing, making it look like a yeah, drunk driving accident. You know, pushes Earl off the truck. Boom. And then just craziness ensues after that. And it turns into this, this whole thing where like several people are plot or like got this plot to basically frame uh, Clay for one of these murders, you know. And in the course of the movie, I mean, the body stack, there's at least four or five people. I can't remember exactly off the top of my head now. And but, it switches a little bit, I think, a l because I think the movie goes in, you think it's going to be about one thing. Mm -hmm. Because it's about like uh, Earl, Clay, Amanda, and then uh, Lester Long, it's yeah. on comes in when they're when clay uh slaps them in yes and how long when when uh lester was into the movie did you realize did you because he's he he doesn't they go fishing mm -hmm. and you know something's up with him then yeah but you know i i can't remember the first time i watched it but i can't remember thinking you know what that that he was if i was looking from it never watching it i would you know be like right. who, who is he what's yeah. what's he doing because it wasn't central around him no yeah no, it wasn't uh, it, it, you're right it shifts but you're like he's he's a little odd he's he's charming but he has this weird sense of humor no yeah well i was i was thinking that too and i was like with the whole laugh he has going on and i'm wondering when i'm watching it, i'm like okay is this again is this Vince Vaughn character development we're just seeing early right, Vince Vaughn, right. or is that was that the character like he just had this weirdo like offhand laugh and I'm watching these scenes where he's sweet talking charming you know whatever characters in the movie 
but he keeps throwing in this weirdo laugh. I'm like, is that seems like a red flag while I'm watching yeah. all the guys I'm like, that would make me feel like weird as uh as somebody you know that heard that, but I don't know. The laugh was weird. He introduces himself to Clay as Lester the Molester. Yes. And he does yeah. that little shake or whatever. Yeah. And then he hits on that uh, young girl, the, the waitress, waitress. Yeah. which he later the takes out. Yeah, yeah, the second waitress. Yeah, and um, it seems like he has another little, a little uh, inappropriate thing, but I can't, I can't recall exactly. But he was, you know, a smooth talker. Yeah, <laughs> or or seemed to be. Seemed to the characters, to be. of course, I'm watching. I'm like, I don't, I don't know. But again, it's it's still, still like classic Vince Vaughn, right? I mean, you right. can see it then. Uh, but yeah, well, yeah. see what was funny the Vince Vaughn then, if uh, and you probably know this when he first came out, you know, obviously after Swingers, I don't think they really knew what to do with Vince Vaughn because yeah. he, was, he was in the, he was in the he was Norman Bates and Psycho if you remember. Yeah, he yeah. did this movie. Yeah, he did another movie with Joaquin Phoenix called Return, Return to Paradise. Paradise. I remember so these that are kind of too. more serious types. Yes, of movies. yes, Return and, to Paradise. That yeah. Was. And uh, and then he kind of switched, but they did a little bit of that with Owen Wilson, if you think about it, because Owen Wilson was in like uh, behind enemy lines. With oh, Gene true, yes. So I think early on, That's earlier on, they didn't know what to do with these guys. Yeah. So we were so seeing, they paired them up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> made a whole bunch. Of it made yeah, made wedding crashers. Yeah, so. great ones. Yeah. No, I have seen Shanghai Nights, Wedding Crashers. I've never seen <laughs> Fred Claus. I've never watched that. One. I have, but I actually forgot all about that until you mentioned it earlier. Right. Uh, I, I, never seen, I do remember seeing the trailer. Yeah, I want to say he's like Santa's brother he or something. Yeah. Yeah, but I don't remember. Exactly. It's probably Santa dies or somehow he might have to take over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah, goes yeah. to the North Pole. I just remember seeing like he was on a, I don't know if it was like a, a train, a toy, like a, I don't know what it was, like a little train or some kind of toy. I don't know. But I've never seen the movie. No, yeah. I, so, I so what would you give plot story out of five? Out of five. Zero out of five. One. Five being the best. Zero being poor. Uh, the, the plot, I'd say, is probably, I mean, it could easily be a four. I would I agree. Mean, whether or not it actually, like, played out you know the, the way it could have uh i don't know but overall i mean the, the plots are great it's a great plot yeah right? i would have four to five as well i think it is uh and if you do enough of these shows and go back this is an often complaint it was a little long yeah agreed could have been cut down at least at least 10 to 12 minutes I agree well i told you when i when i was re-watching it Again, for this, I started half dozing. So I was like, and I the middle the part lags. Yes, the middle yes, part lags, and that's where it was. It was right in the middle part. Uh, and I was like, yeah, this, this. And, and I checked picks, the time. And I was like, Jesus, it's almost two hours. I think. Yeah, yeah. It picks up a little bit in the third act. The second act. The second act is a really hard act to write. Yeah. Um, and this one, but it could have. Uh, they could have, I think, taken out. Chunks or yes. little bits throughout. Yes, agreed. Know. Agreed. Uh, the fishing scene. I know they were trying to set up. They were, you know, pals and stuff that could have been trimmed a little. I think. Mm -hmm. I in, in this dated the film. The opening song dated the film. Yeah. I, thought. Um, I wish I could pull it up here, but I think that dated the film, and I think some of the slow motion shots yeah thing. well and, and it was weird too that since you mentioned the shots because there was a couple which i guess it ended up making sense a little later in the movie so there's the scene where clay's in jail uh lester shows up of course he's kind of he's not even really he's still he's only lester to clay at that point right he's changed like lyle or whoever you know yeah like, yeah Right. But then it turns out it's not even any of those. It's actually Bobby. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. his real name. <laughs> but which you don't actually find out. See, like it seemed like there were things there. Like you left it opened up questions because again, like you said, it almost like that first part, half of the movie, it's very much about Clay. Yeah. But then they bring Lester in and, and, and open up a lot of questions. Yeah. So like, you know, he goes back to this business wherever it's at. Um 
and he's talking to the secretary chick. You find out his name is Bobby, but you you never really find out how like like how did Lester even get into this whole situation of doing? And you never find out here. right away that there has been other. I mean, you you know that they find that body. Yes, but when I but but when I first saw it, I um I just assumed it was the body that uh, Clay had taken there. Right, right. I didn't realize that Lester had been, you know, seven deep in or what. Six or seven. Yeah, yeah, at that point, because yeah. that's told later on. Yeah, but um, yeah, I agree with you. It's almost like they bring that stuff almost too late in the movie. Yeah. To really address it, and it becomes like just these like an like plot holes, yeah, 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 like an afterthought, exactly, exactly. Because I mean, you find yourself wondering more about Wester, well, because it becomes this kind of good, almost good versus evil kind of thing. Like I started, <laughs> I started wondering at one point, like you almost wonder is like Lester's like this devil character, really yeah. in a way, you know, and then it, it's almost like uh, Clay find himself in this redemption point yeah you know for his own soul for yeah. like, you know his own salvation because the whole thing started with him having an affair with married woman begin with True. You know? but uh yeah i mean overall it's a decent movie yeah i thought so too so what about it's characters not, uh we could i mean i think it has some some pretty good characters yeah yeah um and it's got some characters that you or it's designed to dislike the character. I agree. Like Amanda. Yes. Do um, you think Amanda's the only really dislikable character? I didn't find Les- Lester dislikable. Not, not, yeah, not really. I mean, like, I didn't, I don't know if I rooted for him, but I was, I was like, what's he going to do next? Yeah, yeah. Like, what, yeah. What's what exactly? And it's, and like, nobody, nobody dislikes Lester in no. the whole movie. Like, even, even Clay is kind of like, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to try and give too many like spoiler alerts, but even by the end of the movie, he's kind of like when they're sitting there at that little uh, little uh, at the cat at the diner. Yeah, when Lester gets which is just shit. like yeah, it's almost well, it's weird because Lester's character. That's why I like at the one point I'm like, it's almost like this double character because he just like he just pops up. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like I don't know where like okay, like the Clay's in a jail cell. There's a deputy there, and then like next thing you know, Lester's sitting there. Chair, yeah, you know, you're like, how exactly? And, and you know, he finally takes his bullets and everything, however, that transpires. The see that, and the, I, 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 like, how did you pull that off? I, I had wondered how he pulled that, off. yeah, you know, I did wonder that. And you know, I guess they, I guess the logic behind that would be Barney isn't paying attention, he's always asleep, always asleep. he's yeah. a goof, yes, you know, so uh, he's like the like the Deputy Dewey of Scream before he became heroic. <laughs> you know <laughs> right. what I mean? Yes, absolutely. So, uh, but yeah, I think I think all the characters are pretty strong. But yeah, I mean, yeah, they're decent. And, and they're, again, they're well acted. Yeah. Especially, because these are all, yeah, these are all people that you know. Well, not all of them, but, you know, that core cast. It's yeah. all people that we know now. Well, even the sheriff. Um, the yeah, I couldn't sheriff, remember his name, but he is familiar. He's been in the, he's passed away now, but he was in either The Walking Dead that was probably his big, uh, bigger, um, but I'd seen him. I'd seen him from. It's funny, like when people get famous later on, especially if older, and they're famous, you know, from like, uh, I mean, for example, you know, Robert Downey Jr. was famous before Iron Man, sure. but most people know him after that. Yeah, but you, you know, you know him, you know him from something you did in the eighties. Yeah, and that's how this uh, sheriff was. I'd known him from basically the, the Clay Pigeons. Yeah. Uh, so I've seen him, you know, and he's not young in this. No, no. He's got so listen, it, I, I was trying to remember, and I couldn't remember at the end of the movie, and Lester is he's talking about the guy with the horses. Is that the sheriff? Yeah. That, okay, I was thinking yeah. it was. I couldn't remember, and I didn't want to back up, and I'd be like, I'm pretty sure that was the sheriff. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, interesting way to end that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And uh, so, yeah, I would give the characters, I would say they're a solid four out of five. Sure, sure. I mean, it's got a solid cast. I can't think of... You know, I mean, you know, maybe the cute, cute waitress that gets killed, shot, her acting skills weren't the best, I noticed, but, you know, it didn't really require it. No, right. You know, and right. it didn't, she was pretty. Yeah. And that's what you want. You that wanted is. Amanda to feel threatened. Yeah. By this pretty brunette. Yes. Which is the exact opposite of Amanda, this, uh, you know, this, uh, 
vengeful sexual blonde. Yeah, you know, fifth yeah. fatal basically. Fifth fatal, yes. And uh, and then the the, the uh, waitress was kind of like the sweet, yes, innocent. Yes. I mean, even though she was having sex with Clay, <laughs> she was perceived as you know because she was in like her little um, waitress outfit, but it was it was uh, kind of conservative looking and very wholesome. Yeah. And then yes. the exact opposite for yeah. um, well, okay. and I—I I mean, this—I might have taken it too far, but they, the, um, the waitress was usually in. She was only in a couple scenes. Yeah, I was gonna say the the role was. She's is short. she's when she's in the she's uh, the sex scene, obviously, the scene where Amanda sees them walking from the movies. Yes, and then the scene in the the restaurant or diner. What? Yeah, uh, when you're first. And she's, she's first. usually in blue, something yeah. in blue, blue. Amanda is often in red. Absolutely. Which is a con. No, uh, that's, I mean, you know, that's decent observation. Yeah. The red for sure. No, I didn't realize, I didn't make that observation until probably. Did, I, I didn't connect the, the clothing yeah. colors until you mentioned it, but you're right. I mean, Amanda's always in red, which is certainly suits. The color uh, the, the devil's the character. Yeah, quote, yeah, quote, devil's sure. colors. You know? Sure, sure. So, you know, and, uh, and as people, you know, people say often, you know, like, you know, it just seemed like a, a big, a big contrast, you know. Yeah, absolutely. So I don't know if it was intentional, mm. but I'll give the characters four out of five. What about yeah, yeah, I agree with that. Do you have a favorite or least favorite scene? <clears throat> um, again, the, the the scene that really stuck in my head was the one we discussed, uh, which is way early on in the movie. It's uh, in the first act of the movie, the first yeah, twenty minutes. Yeah. yeah, and as far as. As far as the least favorite, I don't, I don't know, because again, the only it's like you mentioned that that middle part of the movie, it it, it lags. You yeah. know, so it, I mean, it's good if you're following it, because I mean, the movie is full of decent dialogue. Yeah, uh, which is cool because I like I like dialogue. I mean, yeah, yeah, me too. Um, but I wasn't yeah, able to I wasn't able to pinpoint exactly a scene that I could say, oh, okay, let's let's remove this entire scene. Yeah, right. You know, I really, because all, all the scenes that I can think of seem needed, there were a lot of cuts, and, and I'd have to go back and, and just focus on this part, but there were a lot of segues and cuts to the clouds in the sky. Yes. If you notice that. Yeah. Now, I know that's often, you know, time passage, just to convey the, the location, mm -hmm. which I thought the location as far as... Uh, was a character amongst itself, if you know. Oh, about sure, it. sure, sure. Because I like Western kind of movies like yeah. that that take play, place. You know, but I think this was supposed to be. Uh, I don't know if I wrote it down, but it, it it told where it was supposed to be. I think Montana. Yeah, Montana is where the movie was. Um, I was to say. So I kind of like that Utah, Montana, Arizona sure, look. Sure. And I thought this captured it well, and as a, as a character, but I I couldn't tell you a scene that. I don't have a least favorite scene. Yeah, I don't have a least favorite. And, and again, not, I can't say I have a favorite other than the, you know, the one that sticks out of my mind. That doesn't mean, that's not to discount other scenes. No, I mean, a, I appreciate them all for what they are. No, there's a scene that I like. It's later on in the movie, um, almost near the end, where Lester, um, he's going to the bar to meet the young girl. Yeah. And he runs into Agent Bill yeah. Shelby. Yes. Yes, which is Janine Garofalo, and they have a little flirtation yes. there. And she, this is one of her best acted scenes in the movie because uh, yes, I know the one. She about. acts a lot with her eyes. Yes, especially when he leaves, the bartender gives her a look, and she she's she can like the bartender does good too. Yes, but I've seen that guy. I probably played bartenders before. I don't know. Sure. It might be the professional actor bartender. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But she does a really good job of acting in that scene. And I thought that was a good, it was like, you know, two or three minute scene. Yeah. And it was just between them at the bar. But you can tell she's, she warms up to him, even yes. though she's drunk, but she warms up to him. She has to put his hat on. Yes. And then when the girl comes, you can see she's disappointed. Pointed. Yes. Or that he leaves. Yeah. No, agree so, on that scene. You know, that one, that one is a notable scene as well. And then um, there's little, and then that's when she realizes um, the cigarette. Right, which which is funny because I was gonna, I was going to half mention another scene, the scene where <coughs> Clay's in jail, Lester shows up and he gives him a cigarette. He goes to light the cigarette, 
And I actually backed it up to watch it again because I felt like I had missed something. Right. And it's that close up on him with the Zippo. And then there's like the spark and closes and like chucks it back like real fast. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, I feel like I should remember this yeah. scene for some reason. But then nothing really comes of it until the scene in the bar yeah. and he breaks the cigarette yeah. and stuff. Uh, and then that still kind of made sense. And there's some other scene where Lester is doing some kind of real like quick. It's earlier in the movie and he does something. Yeah. With a cigarette too. Yeah. I noticed it last night when I watched it. Yeah. Because I when I when I rewatched the scene or rewatched, you know, when she discovers it in the ashtray, I, I was thinking if she had just seen that for the first time, it would mean nothing. Right. So she's I knew she had seen it once, which is the time you'd mentioned. But she yeah. but it had been shown to the audience another time. Yeah. But only she had seen it just but one time and then the, the ashtray, but the audience had seen it the previous when, yeah. when yeah. Lester first came into the scene yeah. or the movie. And that's a good observation. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, I, we, you can't really rate or, you know, take away from the scenes, but I thought all the scenes were, were good scenes, all needed, good dialogue, just yes. some maybe shortened some. Sh- short now. Yeah. And a lot of them could have been cut scenes, you know, like you're talking about. That was just like a lot of landscape. Now, I do think, honestly, now that I think about it, I think, I think the opening scene, I know it's the opening scene, and in the '90s, a lot you sh- you showed a lot of the credits. Now it's yes. not the trend as much now. Right. I thought the opening scene song, which I wish I knew the name of it. More yeah, when you of, mentioned it, first mentioned it earlier, I was trying to remember. Let's see if I can find it. It's this one. I think. This is the opening song. As he's driving the car, driving yes. away from Earl. Right. I never had heard this song before. Yeah. But I don't think this song fits the movie. I don't yeah. think it fits the, the setup of the movie. Now, when I hear it, I think of the movie. Sure, sure. Especially since we watched it. We well, watched it earlier today. Yeah. But I, I, I don't think that I would have put this as the opening. I don't know the song that I would have put, but I yeah. don't think this. I don't know. But I think it's a very 90s sounding song. Yeah, yeah. And the, whole, the whole soundtrack kind of is yeah. like when it first started, like it played with this in the, the first little while, the music's very like uh rockabilly yeah. ish, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, and it was cool. I kind of, I kind of dig that stuff. And then it changes up, but then it's like, it's like this rockabilly, but mixed with this uh, on your scenes that would be more, I guess, uh, tense scenes, <laughs> the dramatic scenes. And it changes to like, this weird, like, dropping sound effects. Like, I, 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 it, I, it was, I, it was weird. It was like, well, I tried strange. to find some of that. I yeah. really tried to find just the score. Like, that works. Like, it totally works. It changes the whole mood to those scenes. And then it kind of shifts back to this. But even the rockabilly stuff that's in the beginning, by the end, it's kind of, it's kind of music's even kind of changed. Right. And then even that's kind of faded out. But, it's it's almost it's almost like it, it almost could have been two movies. Yeah. Even. You know what I mean? Like you'd have drawn the first half out and the second half out. Because so this is on the soundtrack. And I don't know if this is exactly in the movie, but this kind of music was in there. Yeah. Quite a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like that rockabilly, the old country like this. And I kind of read up on, I can't remember the guy's name now that did the music. Uh, yeah, this song was John in there. something. He has like a real jazz background. Okay. The guy that did the, the score for, for this, or did the music. Yeah, not the whole score, obviously. Some right. was recorded by other artists, but uh, I can't remember his name. Now. See if I can look it up. To yeah, it was, but yeah, uh, now, now I did like the, I did like, the, this is a song in the movie. Uh, for those watching on Facebook, we've not yet, uh, Hooked up where you all can actually listen to the music that we're listening. Oh, to. oh, oh! So they I can did. only hear us. Talk. Oh, I did not realize that. Yeah, the Facebook audience. Uh, now the Spotify audience and the YouTube audience and eighty-eight seven will be able to hear everything. Uh, Just not the live audience. So it. Sorry, sorry guys. No, yeah. that yeah, you're totally not getting the same effect. But the song that is playing, which is uh, Michael Legrand, is um, the song where. Um, 
Lester Long is about to kill Amanda. I yeah, think this right. Was, this was the song, wasn't it? Was this the song? I think so. I, I, he start, I, I, I can't remember. The movie's full of little... Because he says, Cowboy in my name. Not, and yeah, then, oh, and then it cuts. right. But I think, no, it's, you're right. I think you're it right. starts with this song. But um, I thought, you know, for the since we're, I thought the score fit the movie for the most part. Yeah, yeah. In the, in the music agree. like you were talking about. Yeah, I agree. You know, I, I think I would have just changed maybe the opening... But that's the cool thing about, you know, when you get in there and you edit the film, you know, like maybe you could try 20 more songs in that opening song. And it just doesn't fit. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like in Donnie Darko, I don't know if you've seen the, the director's cut or the, the original, but I'd seen the original, you know, probably 18, 19 times, the director's cut once. Right. But the music is in different places. At right. Some point. Sure, sure. So it's weird also going into, you know, like, uh, you know, if you go into the movie and, and you're used to watching it this one way and then you see it another way and you're like, what? Right. Or if, like they used to show different versions on TV. Yes. You know, they would, they, they would add, like they used to add a, a, a scene from uh, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles with John Candy and yeah. Steve Martin yeah. uh, in the airplane. And I don't think it was in the original. I can't recall. You know, they, they would do stuff like that. But um, I do think the music and score, not bad. No, I, yeah, I, give it, it, uh, I give it a 3.5 out of 5. I don't know if I'd give it a 4. Yeah, yeah, I could agree with that. Because again, there's some, some of it works. It, overall, it generally works. Uh, there's some good classics. In there. Yeah. Yeah, there were, you've got, you actually got the, um, The feuding and dueling banjos is, uh, and I'm trying to think where in the movie it is. No, I don't know because it's full. It's full of stuff like this. And yeah. Of course, you don't even hear. You don't hear the whole song. You just hear little snippets. Snippets, yeah. yeah. Sometimes you like. I was wondering, like, it could have even been the same song because it's, it's yeah, it's full of it. But yeah, I, um, I, you know, I do think the score the music were good. What about originality of the movie? Um. Well, if I put it in context of the time it was made, yeah, it was it was probably fairly original, right? Um, of course, fast forward, I, I you know, no, I I see it and I think it, it's it's the kind of movie reminds me of like uh, almost like some Coen Brothers stuff, like I yeah. see like Fargo ish kind of stuff, and of course I can't. Well, that's weird that you mentioned Fargo because in front of the DVD, uh, well, in the back of the DVD case. It says this year's Fargo. Ah, that's was, exactly what it says. See, I didn't realize because I was I, I wasn't sure which it's one came out by first. Fargo no, no, absolutely. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Uh, I'm kind of yeah, reflecting back on that one now. Okay, so I was going to say I wasn't sure which one came out first. Fargo uh, came out in '96. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it has that. The plot has that, like that kind of vibe. And I People like this kind of plots. Bodies got to disappear. Yeah, and yeah, no, it, it works. And it's, it's got these formula. like offbeat characters that are kind of like realistic characters. Realistic characters, yeah, yeah. 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 Because everyone, I mean, Clay, you know, Clay seemed he he did seem like a good guy, but even good guys make mistakes. No, sure, it's fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did that did that take away that? He well, was and a then good guy? He, well, sure. Well, he even yeah. followed. Oh, he's done. That too, <laughs> that too. But he doesn't kill anybody. No, in the movie, he and dies at the hands. Of he's a forced, in a way, to dump the body. Yes, agreed. blackmailed. Yeah, blackmailed. Yeah. Exactly. So I mean, if I had to dump a body, or I'm going to be blackmailed. I, where am I dumping this body? I no, guess. right. Well, well, you can tell he plays that dilemma out right up until yeah. the very last scene of that movie. Yeah. And again, <laughs> I'm not going to spoil it for how it plays out, but. Yeah, no, it's just the constant. Yeah, it's kind of covering his own ass a little bit yeah. through the whole movie. But I know when I first watched it, it did seem really original at the time. No, yeah, I agree. And uh, it, it, you know, I can't remember now thinking back what I might have compared it to. But I was into movies like Fargo, like Owen Brothers movies, and, and movies like this, and uh, character driven movies. Yes. You know? And often it would be character driven movies that the characters have committed some type of crime. Yes. You know? Yeah. yeah so yeah. I always found those very, like the, 
the underbelly of people were kind of always intriguing to me. Yes. All the people that live on the fringe of society. Of, yes. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So, uh, so would you recommend this film to others? Well, yeah. I mean, if you're looking for a good old film, uh, it's definitely worth checking out. I think so, too. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, pr- well, you found it on the uh, cinema app, right? Cin- cinema, yeah. So, uh, but if, if someone wanted a hard copy, like a DVD, I don't, I, I think it, I don't know if it's out of print. I do have a DVD copy of it. Yeah, you may. Because but it's again, bare bones. There's, there, the special features are what's coming up in Gramercy. That was the studio. Their upcoming features. Yeah. And then like a trailer for Clay Pigeons. Well, yeah, sure. And right, well, you're talking about bonus features coming out of, you know, 98. Yeah. Where it was like, I mean, it didn't seem like they were even doing that at no. that time. Really. I mean, this was a bare bones. Now, uh, now it's one of those movies you would, you're liable to find in the five dollar man Walmart, yeah, kind of thing, which almost seems like a shame in a way because it's like, but a lot of movies, decent movies, a lot of great movies, are like that. Uh, so yeah, I I, I check the five dollar man all the time because you never know, you might find that old classic. Uh, well, a, a good place to go, I don't know if you've been there. Um, they used to have one, uh, I lived up uh, north in Manassas Park, they had one, I think it was called it's either McKay's or Mr. K's. They have one in Johnson City, and they have uh, like a uh, you know vinyl CDs are still there. Yeah. Um, DVDs, Blu-rays, um, and then they have books. Uh, the whole bottom floor is books. Oh, cool. novels, books, any, any kind of. And then upstairs is divided a half of its books and half is other media. Um, and then they'll they're used. Yeah. But that's where I, I think one of those places where I found play pigeons. Oh, nice. Yeah, I like browsing yeah. those stores. Well, I know that uh, it used G- to be GTK over here used to be that. Well. Yeah. I, mean, I had been in there for years. I must have looked silly. I mean, I'm in there like, where's all the old DVDs? <laughs> I love yeah, those DVDs. yeah, no, I agree. Not rid of them. Which is too bad. It is. Because yeah. I used to love it. It's kind of like I would, I would go in and think of. Uh, all right, I'm looking for this, this, and this. And obviously, this is before stream, streaming made it all possible. Right. But it would be, like, fun to find some of these oh, things. Yeah. Would, we marked that off my list. Right. Right now. Yeah, well, because you never know. Cause there's some good classics out there. Yeah. You just never know. And there, there's a good set of handfuls. I'm always looking to find these. Like, I'm always trying to find uh, Fear and Loading in Las Vegas. I had it on DVD. Like, used on DVD. I can't ever find it. Yeah. And, like, uh, you know, like, streaming's cool. I like having physical copies of stuff too because hey, you never know. I live, listen, I live on a mountain where I got to use satellite internet. So and you don't so know when it's going to be if in the mountain. weather is bad, streaming's kind of, yeah, down the, down down the, the drain. Totally, you know, so wow. I'm build up a DVD collection. Yeah. That's <laughs> where yeah. well. You know. Very cool. But yeah, ladies and gentlemen, that is Clay Pigeons. It is a 1998 movie starring Vince Vaughn, Joaquin Phoenix. And Janine Garofalo, that's the three major stars. Um, I'd say check it out. I uh, definitely say check it out. It's a, it's a movie that you might not see what's going to happen. You know, might not see what's coming. Maybe you will, but it's a fun ride. No, yeah, it's and, definitely a fun ride. And, uh, and you don't necessarily see what's coming. It's it's it's, it's definitely kind of a, a quirky out. film, nor dark comedy, maybe. Yeah. And if nothing else, it's worth watching just to appreciate these stars back then. Yeah. And see like, the evolution wow, of their talent. Like, like walking kind of blew my, blew my mind in a way that when, when I saw him, and then so I, I started watching it, and then I like fast forward to uh, Walk the Line, Walking Phoenix, playing right. Johnny. Do the same. Good times. Thank you, camera went out. <laughs> Oh, it's coming back. Did it? Yeah, yeah. no, you're. So I saw it's because the light went out, but we're still going good. No, yeah, yeah, we're yeah. Still going good. My camera's your camera's on yeah frozen on you. But, yeah, and it's it'll, still it'll, over there. It'll <laughs> it totally works. Right uh, but yeah, so, no, definitely worth definitely worth checking out. But I sure. I do uh, I do uh, appreciate you coming on the show. Yeah, I enjoyed it. It was a good time. Anytime. Now I know next week. Um, I don't know if we're going to be live in the studio. Or if we're going to be on location somewhere, but we will be watching and discussing indecent proposal. Nice. Now, have you watched that before? I have. It's been quite some time. Your camera's out. No. Yeah. No. Well, okay. you had mentioned that that you were going to do that. 
I have. It's another one that's been in a while. You're like pulling out the 90s grab bag. Movies were great. But I, I came out of the 90s. I love the 90s. Movies were good. Some of the last great music, honestly. There's, uh, it's just like you can't. I don't think uh, the 90s might be the best decade for movies. No, yeah. I mean, there's like a lot of really good stuff. I mean, I'm sure good was- stars that came out of like. Well, a lot of stars. Well, a lot of stars we're still very familiar with, but then some that you don't even hear of anymore. Like I very much remember Eric Stoltz yes. growing up. Yes, you know, '90s, and I don't even know what happened to that dude. Now. He's, he's, let me. No, he's in a good movie called. Um, To anybody, it would be killing. So, okay. And that's another one of those movies. Like, I mentioned that movie to anybody, nobody I know has ever seen it. Yeah, you're one of the only, <laughs> probably the only. And it's a good one. Yeah. I mean, it's a good, I have it on the like, uh, I s- it on French TV. cinema kind of movie. Well, it's definitely Frank. I mean, yeah. Set Frank. Everybody that movie was on Frank. And, uh, so, uh, a quick note on that movie. So, they had the location of the bank in the vault. Yeah. And uh, a producer had, had said, hey, I have the money for this. Uh, you know, do you have a script? So the director was like, yeah, I have a script. I'll get it to you, in a, a, you, know, a, you know, soon. He went home and wrote that script in just a few days. Wow. And because he had the location and the money. No, it's good. The film yeah. works good. And the story's good. Yeah. yeah it's a nice. it's a, maybe me and you can do that one soon. That would. I, I, would totally that that I, don't, that. I don't know. If, that's not for everyone either. No, no, so, I can think of a handful of scenes right off the top of my head that so would probably disturb some, some yeah. viewers, possibly. So, right. viewer discretion is definitely advised with that one. All right, killing Zoe down. But it's a good one. It yeah. Is, it, it, Eric Stoltz is a classic actor. He was in Anaconda. I he was, forgot about that. But he, actually, the that he, thing, in that. he gets injured early on. Yeah. I know. And he's laying in the bed and laying. Yeah. You know, he's not awake. Harley, during any of the action, no, I know. at the end of the movie, he wakes up. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? So, at yeah. least he, he, at least he's Lance in the yeah. fiction. Yeah, yeah, agreed. And agreed. Uh, so you know, at least he and has that. Yeah, agreed. and he's he's that one guy in the Cher movie, the guy with the funny head, uh, the El- Elephant Man, uh, or a boy, maybe it's that's how I can't remember what his name was. It's a true story. Yeah. Well, I can't remember what that was. Called. I can't remember what the name of the movie because when was. I was younger, I didn't realize uh, he was he was mask. I want to say mask is the name. You're right. Yeah, your mask. Yeah, and he that's was originally a, um, uh, Marty McFly. Yeah. Oh, that's right. So, yeah. yeah. It just seems like uh, Hollywood didn't really like Eric Stoltz too much. <laughs> no, they didn't because he did a lot of B Ray stuff that was semi decent. But no, he is a molester in the Butterfly Effect. Oh, that's right. That's right. You see, he's only in it for a couple scenes. Short scenes, yeah. And he, have you ever seen the movie called Rules of Attraction? Oh, that's a good one. Is that he's, the one with uh, James Vanderbeek? And, yes. Uh, it's just shown. Uh, that's right. Chin Saucy one. Yeah. No, that's a good one. Now he's a he's a teacher in that. Yes, that's but right. Just briefly. Yeah. That's a good one. So you watch that one? Yeah, no, that's a good one. I like the way it's filmed. With yes. It just like, just gets swooped off yes. with the next character, guys. That's now, a good, good did film. you know, you, pro- you may have known, so uh, James Vanderbeek's character is named Sean Bateman. Right. His brother is Patrick Bateman uh, from American Psycho. <laughs> I did not make because that. Because the author of the book, connection. the author of American Psycho is the author of Bulls of Attraction. Uh, uh, wow. No, I didn't know that. You know, and they originally were going to try to get Christian Bale in a scene. In rules of attraction. Because the so there's one scene where uh, wow, I never would have made it. Where Sean, he's at the drug dealer's house, and he calls somebody on the phone, and he or he references his brother. He either calls one of the two. It was supposed to be yeah, Christian Bale, who uh, celebrated his 49th birthday yesterday. Happy birthday! And just Christian. a random uh, yeah. thing I saw yesterday. Yeah, psycho Batman. <laughs> yeah, I'm just uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know what's going on with the camera here, but it's it's not. Uh, my yeah, yeah, going out again. It's been a fun show. It sure has. I enjoyed it. So, uh, everyone out there, please check out youtube.com slash the other people show. You can do that on Facebook and Spotify. This episode will be on Spotify tomorrow. 
Uh, it'll, it'll probably air on 88.7 WMMT this Saturday at 10. If not this Saturday, next Saturday. So, cool. so yeah. So we're going to leave. Let's see. We'll leave everyone with, uh, I think this song was in the movie as well. We'll find out. Now, that was weird. That's a computer uh, <laughs> cut out twice, but we do have a lot of electronics in here. Sure. No, yeah, yeah. Things are bound to happen. It is right, right. But yeah, join us uh, next week. We have a decent proposal with Denny Moore and Woody Harrelson and Robert Redford. Yes, and this was uh, that's a good movie. That's a good movie. Yeah. Stimulate some discussion, sure. Cause yeah. When I heard that you were doing that, I, I immediately was you. You immediately put yourself in that situation, in like, damn, would you or wouldn't you? Yeah. So good night, everyone. Good night. Now, I will just have to end the show from... <laughs> <laughs>